Hi and welcome back to the countertop and today I'm doing salted caramel panna cotta from each table. Hi and welcome back. And the recipe I'm doing today is from this book, Rich Table by Ivan and Sarah Rich. Uh, they are two the chefs and the owners of the Rich Table restaurant here in San Francisco. And they are also owners of the RT Rotisserie, also here in San Francisco. Uh, talking about the recipe that we are doing today, it was like a very strange decision and a very crazy research here. The reason for that is because, as you can see here, I have a like probably like 10 books here and all of them have somehow a recipe from Pona Cota. You probably saw many different Pona Cotas. I think all the greatest restaurants at some point in their life they have a Pona Cota in their dessert menu. Uh, you probably also saw Christina Tozzi Pona Cota recipe on the chef's table which is an amazing story which is a really good which is pretty much the trigger to start the Momofuku milk bar and now the milk bar. So it's a very interesting, a very classic Italian uh, dessert, a very classic dessert overall. I think it's very good. The crazy thing on panna cotta overall is like after you follow the base, which is the right amount of gelatin, the right amount of heavy cream and the whole milk, or even like sometimes not even the whole milk, you can create whatever panna cotta you want. So you can, make, you can mix with flavors, you can go to lemon and verbena, or you can use like coconut milk and do more like a coconut panna cotta, a chocolate panna cotta, or cereal milk panna cotta, just like Christina Tosi is doing. So many of different recipes, so it's a nice range just for starting this base. Talking a little bit about the book, the book has a very basic organization from appetizers, entries, desserts and drinks. I love the book, the way they tell a little bit about their story, how they match each other, how they became a couple and so on. So it's a very interesting first beginning to read. In all the recipes, they have their own take, their own tip about the recipe. So it's very good and worth the reading. I highly recommend you to do, besides the panna cotta, the sardine chips. It's an amazing dish. I have this dish on the restaurant. I highly recommend also you for you to go to the restaurant. Okay, please, all these books here, I will put the link in the description with an affiliate link from Amazon. As you know, affiliate links help us to get some support from you guys in the sense of like cashback, but that won't cost anything extra for you. All right, so let's go for the ingredients. So here's all the ingredients that we need for our recipe today. So for the panna cotta, you need 10 grams of powdered gelatin, three cups of heavy cream. You're also gonna need one cup of whole milk, 150 grams of sugar, and 10 grams of salt. And for the coffee crumble, you're gonna need 35 grams of all-purpose flour, 25 grams of coffee beans finely grounded, 30 grams of sugar, quarter of teaspoon of salt, and two tablespoons of unsalted butter, melted and cooled, all right? So let's first start doing the panna cotta because the panna cotta needs to set in and then we move to the crumble, okay? So let's start doing. So the first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna dissolve the gelatin into two tablespoons of water. And now you're gonna transfer your milk in your heavy cream to a bigger bowl for us to use it later. I'm just using my stand mixer bowl because it's going to be way easier for me to pull it over later. And then we're gonna grab a medium saucepan here and put all the sugar and try to put this into a more even layer. And now it's time for us to start melting the sugar on the stove, okay? Now you place the pan over medium heat to start melting the sugar. You can use a spatula to gently stir the melted sugar into the center of the pot. Continue to melt and stir gently until the sugar has completely melted and turned into a deeper underbrown. So something around five minutes. After this, immediately remove the pan from the heat and gradually pour about one cup of the cream mixture. It will bubble dramatically. Place the pan back over medium heat and continue to cook until the sugar melts back into the cream and the mixture is smooth. So something around just one to two minutes. Now I remove the pan from the heat 
Now it's time for us to add our gelatin here and also our salt. And let's mix this well to dissolve everything. Now we're gonna put the salt caramel mixture into our rest of our cream. And you're gonna whisk this together until you have a super smooth mixture. Now you're gonna divide these into small bowls, ramekins, or something that you like. I'm just going to use these very beautiful cups here. And you're gonna cover these now with a plastic wrap and you let these in the fridge for minimum three hours to set. You can leave these overnight, but three hours should be enough. Okay, I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna jump to the crumble. To make the coffee crumble is super simple. So the first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna put your oven to 165 degrees Celsius. And now you're gonna use a medium bowl to whisk together flour, coffee, sugar, and the salt. And after everything is well whisked and you can smell the amazing coffee flavor that comes from it, you're gonna add the butter and using your hands, you're gonna rub into the flour until the mixture has a crumbly and like sandy-like texture. You're gonna spread the crumble into a single layer of a pie pan or a small baking sheet. And you're gonna bake until beginning to crisp, so something around 10 to 12 minutes. So here's our crumble. Now this needs to be cooling down in the cooling rack. So let's wait for this. Pretty much the same time that we need the panna cotta to cool down in the fridge as well. And after this, I'll be back in trying this mixture together to see how it goes. So here's our panna cotta. I also put here some whipped cream together with the coffee crumble and the panna cotta in the middle. Looks interesting. The texture so far looks interesting, the way it bounces. So now it's time for us to try. The coffee crumble, it smells so good right now. So let's hope it tastes well. So let's try it. Let's put a little bit of the crumble here. I was expecting to the coffee crumble be too heavy and have like just like a super intense flavor of the coffee and that overshadows everything but actually it's pretty good like you see you feel the salted caramel from the panna cotta the coffee bounces back and you have the whipped cream pretty much to rebalance everything it's quite an interesting dish it's quite a very interesting dessert and super easy for you to make at home thanks for watching you're gonna see below on the description some affiliate links to amazon where i can make some money to support the channel but that won't cost anything for you from all the books that i mentioned in the intro and also of course the rich table book uh, please don't forget to comment if you like or if you don't like this recipe if there's anything that you like to see here in the channel tell your friends don't forget to subscribe. See you next week. Bye.